What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Thank you for clicking onto this reaction. I hope you're looking forward to it just as much as I am. If you haven't already, head over to the content creators page. That link is in the description box down below. If you haven't already and you're enjoying our content, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but we're gonna jump straight into this one. Yeah, if you could, Rudy, and I'll jump on it tomorrow. After the Prophet Muhammad's victory over the Krashi Meccans at the Battle of Badr, the Meccan leadership had been decimated with the execution of Amr ibn Hisham and the loss of many tribal leaders. Mm -hmm. The disastrous news came as a shock to Abu Sufyan, but the old chiefs were soon replaced by their inexperienced sons, leaving Sufyan the only Quraysh leader of notable stature to direct civil and military affairs within the city. Just because he's got the most experience, right? The older leadership had been reluctant to use force against Muhammad. But with the devastating Meccan defeat at Badr, the mood in Mecca changed drastically. Yeah, they felt like they had the no Meccans choice. Now believed Muhammad could only be dealt with by force. And within a month after Badr, a Meccan raiding party had been assembled of around 150 to 200 men under Abu Sufyan's personal command to undertake a raid against Medina. Hmm, the how does this go? Muhammad as their arch enemy. Well, we all know how that goes, don't we? <clears throat> yeah, I hope you're doing good. In April 624, Abu Sufyan's raiders approached Medina. Following traditional Arab tactics, they made ready to attack in the early morning, switching from camels to horses. Okay. Details on the raid are scarce, but it seems that it turned into a minor skirmish with only a few workers caught tending the fields mm. and two houses burned before the Meccan raiders withdrew. Oh, is that it? Is that all that happened? After some time, Muhammad gathered a response force and chased after the raiders. But the does he catch him? The is known derisively by Muslim chronicles as the porridge raid since during their escape from Muhammad, the Meccans jettisoned some of their baggage, including several sacks of dried barley used for making porridge. Man so they, soon broke off his so they, they ended up having to leave stuff. So was it really worth it in the end? What a modest start of one of the biggest empires of the world. I also agree, DZ. Having given chase mostly to save face and not to engage the Meccans. The following month, Muhammad sought to capitalize off his victory at Badr by assembling a force of up to 450 men and leading raids against two Bedouin tribes, the Katafan and the Beni Sulaim. While no large-scale fighting took place, Muhammad's strategy became clear. His aim was to strangle and isolate Mecca economically and politically by depriving it of its much-needed Bedouin allies for safe caravan passage. Makes sense why you In try that January tactic. In 625, an army of 3,000 men and 200 horses made up of the Quraysh, an assembly of Bedouin client tribes and some Abyssinian mercenaries, marched out of Mecca toward Medina, determined to bring the war to Muhammad's doorstep. They're trying they to force this engagement, the aren't they? Outskirts of Medina, with their route of march taking them west of the city and then north where they camped at a place known as the Two Springs on an open plain at the foot of a rocky outcropping called Mount Uhud. Okay. Terrain had made the direct approach to Medina from the south impossible since the city is situated on a lava plain about 10 miles wide and 10 miles long surrounded on three sides by steep mountains. Is that why it's called a lava plain? I'm not I'm not aware of that term being used. So what is a lava plain for me? Um just let me know. Medina could only be approached Battles with only a few hundred soldiers, ground, perfect DZ. Obstacles. The Meccan army went into camp just north of the foot of Mount Uhud, but their arrival was no secret, and Muhammad immediately dispatched Muslim scouts to maintain watch over the enemy army. Smart. He called for a general mobilization to meet the threat, and about a thousand men were mustered for duty. Muhammad knew he was greatly outnumbered. Additionally, giving battle on an open plain 
would relinquish the advantage to the Meccans. Worse, the Muslims had no cavalry, while the Meccans had 200 horsemen under the command of Khalid ibn al-Walid and Iqb. And we know how good Khalid is, so... It's... Oh no, is it the same Khalid? No, it's a different Khalid, isn't it? Oh, am I getting confused now? Have I really made a fool of myself? Prama ibn Abu Jal, later to become two of the most famous Muslim generals in the early Islamic conquest. No, I am right. Muhammad assembled a war council to seek advice. As always, the Prophet was disposed to the defense and wanted to draw the enemy army into Medina itself in urban house to house fighting. In this argument, he was supported by Abdullah ibn Ubay, the chief of the Khazrai and an experienced warrior who was also in favor of fighting it out in the mm -hmm. streets. Their argument was sound. The palm groves, springs, walled gardens, and the fortified compounds with their towers made it difficult for the Meccans to bring their superior numbers to bear on the Muslims. Yeah, their, their encampment, encampment is pretty well defended by natural obstacles, isn't it? Um, yeah, I also think you are correct, DZ. I do think they convert a bit later. Khalid fought Muhammad before, but then converted to Islam. I thought so to, uh, as well. Thank you for um, keeping me updated. The terrain and obstacles would break up any Meccan unit cohesion making them vulnerable to ambush mm -hmm. and piecemeal engagements by the Muslims, defeating them in detail. The Meccans also had no siege weaponry, so if the Muslims withdrew into their compounds and refused to give battle, the Meccan army, lacking any supply trains, would be forced to abandon their position after the crops in their field were all used up. However... The, yeah, however, the problem with that is you're putting your... Um your populace, your civil populace at risk as well. I do think that maybe that would have been the best play, personally. Um, their, their sort of encampment is very well defended, and I think I might have stayed there instead of taking the fight to them. But I'm not Mohammed, so let's see what he does. A large crowd had gathered, some wanting to fight in the city, while many wanted to fight in the open. Muhammad finally decided on a pitched battle. He donned his armor and retrieved his weapons and ordered the men to muster near the cul-de-sac at the foot of Mount Uhud. Mm. However, Ibn Ubay strongly opposed Muhammad's decision to offer battle in the open plain instead of engaging in urban combat in the streets of Medina. He withdrew his contingent of Khazrai tribesmen, about 300 men, a third of Muhammad's army, and rode back to Medina. You don't leave midway through battle. What are you doing? Muhammad the the host pressed on Muhammad don't need you. Mount a hood. Upon the arrival of the How's Meccans, it do this? ordered a skirmish line to be thrown out across the northern approaches and nightly patrols conducted to warn of enemy activity. Smart. Muhammad then surrounded himself with a bodyguard of 50 chosen men. With the withdrawal of Ibn Ubay's troops, Muhammad had only 700 troops on hand to combat the Meccans. Of these, only a hundred were equipped in male armor. Wow. And what was the other force? How large was that? I think it was quite large. It looked quite outnumbered. Across the pending battlefield, the Meccan cavalry had deployed in a somewhat unorthodox manner. One How so? The contingent under the command of Ikrima ibn Abu Jal was deployed forward of the main Meccan infantry line and was likely intended to skirmish with the Muslim front line using their lances from horseback. Interesting. The more serious threat to Muhammad's position was the second cavalry troop, probably larger, commanded by Khalid ibn al-Walid, and deployed far to the right of the Meccan infantry line. Yeah, that was the biggest threat. His mission was to turn Muhammad's flank. Mm. The terrain to Muhammad's left was broken by palm groves and walled gardens, but this was insufficient to prevent a movement in formation by al-Walid's cavalry. To prevent the Meccan horsemen from turning his flank, Muhammad posted 50 archers on the I-9 hill, hereafter called the Hill of Arrows in Muslim Ooh, Chronicles. 
very nice hill, uh, very nice name for that hill. Very, very nice. You think it was 3,000 on the other side? Holy, holy, how is he going to do this battle? How is he going to win? Mohammed reviewed his troops on horseback and then moved them into position on the battlefield. Sources don't specify the exact time of the start of the Battle of Uhud on March 23rd, 625, but it can be assumed that it likely started in the late morning mm -hmm. or early afternoon. The two lines of infantry drew closer to one another, and the battle began when a Meccan warrior stepped forward, challenging the Muslims to send forth a champion to come forth and meet him in individual combat. Ali rushed from the Muslim ranks, attacked the Meccan, and killed him with a single mm. of his sword. Easy, mince me. Allah Akbar rose from the Muslim ranks. The brother of the slain warrior rushed from the Meccan ranks to attack his brother's killer. Before he could reach Ali, the fierce Hamza stepped forward between yes. him and cut the assailant down. Easy, light work. Three more men from the Meccan line challenged Hamza one after another. All three met their deaths at the end of his blade. Yes. Excited by the vigorous single combats taking place before them, the Muslim ranks charged the Meccans, <laughs> engaging them in fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat. They're all riled up. They couldn't wait to get in there. They just charged. The wounded were slain without mercy. Mm. As the battle raged between the infantry, a Muslim soldier named Abu Dujana cut his way through the enemy ranks before reaching the Meccan camp. He then scattered the Meccan female camp followers as he rushed headlong into the encampment. Setting it alight? While Hamza seems to have taken part in the charge, but prowled the battlefield looking for Meccan warriors to fight. Little did he know that Washi, a hired slave mercenary, was also looking for him. Oh, okay. Inspired by Hin, the daughter of Utaba ibn Rabia, who had been killed by Hamza in the Battle of Badr, and now she wanted revenge. Oh, I see. As engaged another Meccan champion, Washi found him, threw his javelin, and pierced right through his body. Hamza charged Washi, but before he could reach him, he collapsed to the ground. Ah, oh, what a shame about Hamza. What a absolute shame. The other guy had to kill him. Like, like it had to be a 2v1. Do you know what I mean? Like, they couldn't get an honourable fight. Um, that's absolutely savage and so upsetting. Washi retrieved his javelin and proceeded to walk off the battlefield, having no further business there. The ferocity of the Muslim attack succeeded. Oh, so the assassin literally got his kill. He's going to go get his money and he's left. He's not staying there for the rest of the fight. That's, that's something else. He did in breaking the Meccan line at several points, permitting groups of Muslim soldiers to penetrate and begin isolating segments. Of I know it was their job to kill uh, Hamza, but still... Have a bit of honor to do it, but then I guess you're killing someone. So you're killing someone for money. So how much honor do you actually have? It was just a shame. The Meccan ranks, hacking them to pieces. For a while, their superior numbers allowed the Meccans to hold on to their mm. position. Eventually, however, they began to waver and fall back in a semi-disciplined fashion. It was at this point that the Muslims pressed the attack with great force and ferocity. Nice, that's it. Through the Meccan ranks until the enemy was cut off from their camp. With Muslim soldiers behind them... They're going straight for the rear. I thought they would have tried an encirclement. And in the midst of their ranks... Nah, that's it though. Meccan defense collapsed. Once more, Muhammad's disciplined infantry had proven mm. a smaller, highly motivated force could defeat a larger, less motivated force in close combat. Had the Muslims even had a small cavalry contingent with which to pursue and scatter the routed Meccans, the Battle of Uhud would have been a complete disaster for the enemy army. But he only the had cavalry, Commanded by troops. Khalid ibn al-Walid had still not engaged in the fighting. Khalid hovered near the flanks, moving his mounted contingent about and waiting for the right time to strike. Okay. It was at this time that the Meccan infantry broke and fled, 
exposing their camp. The Muslim attack subsequently lost momentum as the soldiers abandoned the fight to plunder the camp. What's gonna happen? Many of the archers guarding the Hill of Arrows also joined in the looting. Ah, oh, now providing more space for Khalid to come in. How this fight is about to switch. With only a handful remaining at their post. Al-Walid, seeing most of the archers leaving to plunder the Meccan camp, rallied his cavalry as he would full gallop through the now unprotected gap. Mm. Khalid led the horsemen from the front as they turned Muhammad's flank. Once again, Khalid at the front. And struck his forces in the rear. Mm. Two hundred Meccan cavalry punched right through the enemy infantry and continued riding, readying themselves to wheel about and strike again. Attempting to regroup along the line of departure, the Muslims broke off their looting and turned around. This provided <sighs> room for the Meccans to reform and return the attack. Oh no! Oh no, oh no, oh no! Behind the Muslim positions, his horsemen riding about the rear striking mm. opportunity with their long lances. The Muslim infantry began to lose its cohesion and flee, with their formations collapsing entirely. Events went from bad to worse. Muhammad and his bodyguard were now surrounded by Meccan troops pressing the How are they going to get out of this? Attack with great force. As the din of combat swirled around the Prophet, he was struck in the face with a sling stone, mm. and shattered one of his teeth and cut his lip and cheek and received a sword blow on his helmet, the force of the impact knocking him off his feet. Around him, his bodyguards were being cut to pieces. The Meccans closed in on Muhammad's position. Seeing this, the Prophet's standard bearer, Muzab ibn Umayyah, raised his flag and shouted the takbir to divert the enemy's attention to himself. Mm. Muzab fought valiantly, but was cut down. Mm -hmm. Suddenly the what a brave man though Umar swept the battlefield that Muhammad had been killed a cheer rose among the Meccans but they mistook Muzab for Muhammad both of whom wore similar battle armor do they leave him news of the prophet's death brought the battle of Uhud to an end with the Meccans breaking off their attack in celebration Meanwhile, Muhammad, dazed from the blow he received, was safe under a pile of bodies, protected by a few stalwart Muslim warriors. Holy! Holy! What an interesting turn in events for fate. What would have happened if they didn't stop there? How much of the world would be changed if they continue to go after Muhammad there? What ripple effects would that have to today's world? That's so interesting to me. How he survived and how lucky he was con considering what happens afterwards as well. Wow. Muhammad and his followers later buried their dead on the battlefield and returned to Medina that night. He's so lucky. The Battle of Uhud may have seemed like a major defeat for Muhammad's Muslim army, mm. but Abu Sufyan's Meccan army failed to follow up the scattering of Muslim forces and take Medina. He soon had the Meccan army riding home, believing they had won and that Muhammad was dead. Two days after the battle, Muhammad ordered the remnants of his army to assemble back at Medina. Of course he would. The Battle of Uhud was a setback for the Muslim cause, but Muhammad had not been killed, and Medina had survived. Mm. He and his men lived to fight another day. And I bet the opposition regretted that they didn't finish it off there and then. Ah, wow, what an interesting turn of events. What an, an amazing video once again by History Marche. They make amazing, amazing content. I really enjoyed that one.